Okay, guys, welcome back to the channel. This is going to be a really cool video series. I've been meaning to do it ever since Munich when I went on that tour of five manufacturers in Italy, Audioflight, Alari, Goldnote, Unison Research, Opera, loudspeakers. And this was uh, a tour set up by Fidelity Imports, the importer into the U.S. of all those brands. And they invited a bunch of other high-profile members of the press. I've done video interviews with all those guys as well, and that was phenomenal getting to know them. And you should definitely check out their videos. I'm kind of pulling up the rear, finally getting to this. I think that all of them have released their videos so far. But we all have different styles, so I think watching everyone will be important to you. Uh, and my style, as uh, you probably already know from show coverage, is going to be very quasi real time, raw. <laughs> I'm not as good as those guys at filming, editing, spending all that time on that stuff. But one of the reasons I have a style like I do is I like to give you quasi real time, raw footage of how I saw things and let things transpire. And whatever resonates with you can resonate with you on your own. But then I'll give you some takeaways. I'm gonna, for each tour, I'm going to tell you what were my main takeaways from that visit. What brand, what model numbers in their line were things that I would own. In some cases, some pieces became part of my bucket list that I'd love to own one day. But then there's other things I can tell you based on my visit where, hey, the, this model and this model in their line, I'd go for this model. For just a $1,000 more, you're getting a whole much, a uh, lot better performance uh, so it's worth it. Or in some cases, maybe the one that's cheaper is giving you 90% of the performance of the much more expensive one. I can give you some of those takeaways as part of this series, uh, but I do want to give you mostly raw footage uh, that I shot and let you let things resonate with you. Because it's not going to be like an infomercial. It's not going to be super polished. Uh, this is going to be raw footage. And in fact, a lot of stuff that I'm sharing with you is going to be even non-audio related. Uh, some of it's going to be just fun interaction between me and the guys on the press tour. Like in this video, you're going to hear Tom Martin with uh, Absolute Sound. You may not know this. He was alive when the dinosaurs were around and he heard when the meteorite hit the planet. So he's the only one with a reference to the base uh, and how that sounded when the meteorite hit the planet. You're going to hear us talk about that uh, in this video. That's the kind of fun stuff you're going to hear on my videos on these tours, as well as some bonus footage I'm going to share with you in this first video. We did Unison Research and Opera loudspeakers first. But before we even went to the facilities, uh, a lot of these guys that work at these, they're not just audiophiles. They love wine. And uh, in fact, one of them, I think, is a sommelier. He took us on a wine tour. You're going to meet him and see some of that footage. I'm going to share with you the wine tour. A lot of just raw footage lot to show you what I experienced and let you see whatever resonates with you. But I think one of the macro takeaways I will kind of spoil for you like I said, when you think of Italy, you may think of one brand that's an audiophile, it's a big conglomerate. Um, I think the takeaway is that <laughs> that may not be the brand you think of anymore when you think of Italy. Some of these small brands and, the, and more importantly, the quality of people behind it and some of the technology that you're going to see that they do, sometimes a small company can do things that aren't financially, they can ignore the financial benefit and do things regardless of uh, financial interest and just go for performance only. And that's one of the takeaways with all of these manufacturers I think you're going to get, as well as the people behind it. You're going to feel good about spending money with any of these three companies. You'll probably figure out with the videos which one resonates more with you. But in any of these cases, you're going to feel so much better, I'm almost sure, than spending money with a big conglomerate. And so that's two things I wanted to give you as macro takeaways right away, but I'm going to share some raw footage first, the fun stuff, the detailed stuff, some of the presentations you'll see as much as I saw. Uh, I'll curate some of the boring parts that where I'm just moving around the facility, but I'm going to try to give you as much raw footage as possible from each of these tours. Let me know your feedback, what your takeaways are, but I'll be giving you takeaways and uh, things that are important to me. I love these companies. Props to Fidelity Import. Let me give you this disclaimer. Fidelity Imports did pay for my room and board and food that entire week. Now, I came out ahead on nothing. In fact, I did have to change my flight from Munich back uh, to extend it a week, and it cost me extra money. 
Uh, technically, I came out <laughs> less. They offered to pay for that. I didn't want to shake them down. It was big enough for them to pay for my room and board and food that whole week. And uh, even though I didn't come out ahead, that's a huge perk. That was a huge cost for them and the companies. However, they shared the cost to entertain us and show us their facilities. Big props to them. Big thanks to them. But I just wanted to give you 100% transparency of the perk that I got for doing this. Um, but again, nothing ahead on this. I'm not being paid to say anything. He told us right off the bat, you can not do a video. You can do a video. You can say whatever you want. And uh, again, that's what it, the kind of people I appreciate. That I'm not even have to show them the video in, a, in advance for them to approve anything. This, these are the kind of people I like to support. So enjoy part one. I can't even tell you how many parts are to come, but I think you're really going to love this series. You guys that like to get into the weeds and enjoy all the details. Enjoy, guys. Hello, good morning. Hello, good morning, Jason. Jason, good to meet you. Oh, white and black. This is cool. I like it better than the uh, Sonus Faber style. That is really cool. These were some of my favorites. This is so so look at this design of this cabin. Front ported, tiny. What is the current you're gonna see that. There's nothing current in here, I don't think. So it look like a weird firing tweeter here. Yeah. So is this controllable, I wonder, if the level is adjustable? So this, I think this is a walkthrough of some of their legacy models. Really cool design, Italian design is very important. And look, we, we buy with our eyes as much as our ears. You want something you're proud of, even when it's not playing. Clear audio turntable. Oh wow, look at this. <laughs> Smart 845. That's cool. Stereo preamp. Look at this. Wow, I've never seen this piece. Never. Have you ever seen this, Tom? This preamp here? Feather one. And this is historic stuff, I think. Steve said these are probably from 20 years ago. 20 years ago? Okay. He didn't, he didn't name that number, but it sounded like. I'm only 25, so yeah, I was too young. <laughs> you would know, Tom. <laughs> <laughs> I always wanted number of yeah. 200 okay. or more. Yeah. So. Okay. You know what the dinosaurs were listening to back in the day. I did. You know the first audiophile dinosaur. When that meteorite hit? Yeah. The bass was incredible. <laughs> we could have a meteorite driven song. Can it, can it reproduce the sound of that meteorite? <laughs> You're the only one with the true reference, though. You're the only one that's going to be able to judge the subwoofer. You should have told Levin something. <laughs> Oh, yeah, I'm, Levinson, your next project when, is going to be down, down below realistic, and I'm getting <laughs> Tom to... Right. That's cool. 
This is really cool. Yeah. These are good picture worthy stuff. Oh wow, look at this over here. Ken, you want me in the picture too? <laughs> Just this once. <laughs> Oh, look at this porting system. Very unique. It's a massive cabinet. Again, many of you guys probably never have seen this gear before in the States. Even the remote control. This is the type of stuff I love seeing because it's stuff I don't normally see. Yeah, no problem. And it's a walk on, through history. I, 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 I would give you a hug, but you, you, you are... All right, much more to come. Uh, it's, it's like a farmhouse that's, oh, yeah. that, that you can stay in. Exactly. They have a great place for it to appear. Exactly. Right. And they have the restaurant there, and they, they have some room. And so, look at the boat, you just don't. Ali, see! The, the, Quasi. Uh, the, the room is uh, on the um, on the facing the valley. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, that's cool. <laughs> that's <really> cool. <laughs> They do even, uh, they do no, they do Pinot Grigio, uh, Ribolla, that is typical from this side. For about two years, so it's a pretty long short on method. It's accumulated from a vintage 17, 18, and 19. And every vintage goes about six months of aging in a French oak barrels. So, what you will have is like a, a pretty uh, intense flavor, uh, a nice crunchy aroma, um, a lot of persistency, but a little bubble, um, not aggressive one, and a lot of minerality, which is uh, the main thing about the white wines in, uh, of course, the entire field. So many versions, I mean, all of them are so many. Before I said Absolutely gorgeous. Yeah.